Welcome to Tagumigo. In this video, I would like to talk about this topic. Why you can't improve in Go? What is the key to improve in Go? I know many players, although trying very hard, they still stuck in Q level. So why couldn't you become a Dan level? Here, I would try to share my opinion to this topic. I think we need to first think about what is the nature of Go. I think playing Go. It's a process of creating puzzles, and simultaneously we are also solving puzzles. So you are creating puzzles for your opponents, and on the same time you need to solve opponents' puzzles. But sometimes it's not only about you and your opponents. I think Go itself puzzle would just pop out naturally when you play some stones on the board. It's very interesting. So very naturally. When you play Go, you will need to solve a lot of problems and puzzles. Then we need to know what is the nature of these puzzles. There are two types of puzzles or problems. The first type is abstract problems, problems that do not have clear answer. But we also have problems with objective answers. For example, life or death. Is it a life group or a death group? Could you kill it? This is objective. Kill it or not? Again, capture or not? Or cut or not? Is there a cut? Is the cut effective? This is something objective. And also the value of your set. Is this value worth ten points or eight points? Is this hane more valuable than this capture? They are objective, and for the abstract problems, actually, it's always about one question: what is efficiency in Go? There are many proverbs trying to answer this question. Let's take a look into some proverbs that I think Q players should learn and Dan players should already master. Let's take first proverb you probably have learned. Corner is gold, edge is silver, and center is grass. That means the corner is the most valuable, and the center is the least valuable. The logic is simple because for a corner, you only need to defend the two sides, then you could get a corner. But for the edge, you need to defend three sides of the board, and for the center, you need to defend all the four sides in order to surround territories. In the center, so surrounding the corner should be the most efficient. And this is the first proverb trying to answer what is efficiency in Go. Let's see some more. It's hard to win by one piece of territories. In a nineteen times nineteen board, the board is so big. So usually. If one side trying to surround only one piece of territories, it's not enough. The third proverb: a band is very strong. For example, this band trying to develop the influence and the moyo on the right hand side. If white did not play this move, letting the black to play this move, then the right hand side have been pressed down. And on the other hand, the black could develop the upper side, so this band is a key point of both sides. Fourth, if you have lost all four corners, then you have lost. Um, this is only a proverb, not a truth, but it's also reflecting the first proverb that surrounding the territories at the corner have higher efficiency. So if one side could get all the corners. Usually, it should have higher efficiency than the other side. Then approach from the wider side, because a wider side do not have any stones. Then placing one stone on this side should have more values. And on the other hand, if you approach in the narrowed side, then your stones may be attacked by your opponent. So this group could not surround territories and would be attacked. Similarly, we will block on the wider side. In this example, where should the black block? The left hand side 
or the right hand side? The answer should be obvious. You should block at the left hand side. After you block on the left hand side, then you play one more move to surround the Moyo on the bottom edge. If you block the wrong side, then this group efficiency is low. And then, don't use fakeness to make territories. Let me explain why this rule makes sense. Because how could you get fakeness or influence? You could get fakeness or influence by pressing enemies on the edge or at the corner. For example, in this situation, the black get the influence by pressing the white at the corner. So, if you try to use the fakeness to surround territories, then you are betraying the proverb of golden corner, silver edge, and grass center. This is not the good way to use influence. The good way to use influence is to attack. By attacking enemies, you will force your enemies to escape or play at non-valuable area. You would like to get the efficiency back by attacking. And lastly, pawn to key is worth 30 points. Normally, a pawn to key worth 1 or 2 points because you only capture one stone, one stone worth one or two points. But why we said pawn to key is worth 30 points? It's because this pawn to key is a very strong shape. By having a very strong shape, it has a great influence to the bottom edge, and black could get a lot of benefit on the bottom edge. That's why we would say Pawn to key is worth 13 points. These proverbs are all trying to answer how to surround territories efficiently. We would say they are the goal theory and they are the abstract side of goal problems. If you are dumb players, I think you should have mastered all of the proverbs I have suggested. And if you are a Q player, if you understand all of the proverbs, then I think you already have enough knowledge about the abstract side of goal knowledge as a Q player. And if you find that you are not very clear about the abstract knowledge about goal that I have suggested, then this is my suggestion of how to improve in this type of knowledge. Firstly, I do not recommend AI, especially for Q players. I have a reason about this. It's not because I'm a go teacher and I do not want you to use AI. It's not like that. The reason is that human could do generalization. That means we generalize that the goal knowledge into some useful goal theory that we could teach you. But AI could only tell you the best choice in every game. That means by studying AI, you could get the best option in every game. But you could not generalize the answer. I see some people which try to generalize the goal knowledge from AI by themselves, but usually it's not working because AI is too strong. By slightly changing some position of stones, AI will change its choice of playing. So, it's very hard to learn from AI. I would say, by learning human's knowledge, you could prevent playing big mistakes. Although you may not find the optimal choice in each game, but you could prevent making big mistakes in every game. And here are my suggestions to improve this kind of goal theory. Firstly, read the famous legends books or games. I would recommend Takemiya Masaki, Fujisawa Hideyuki, or Chochi-kun. That's him. If you don't like the Japanese players, then you could try out Lee Chan-ho, the Korean legend. I do not recommend modern games for Q players. Modern games means the games after the 2010s because they are too difficult to understand. The calculation are very deep and the fight is very intense. And apart from reading books and games, I 
always recommend you to play more and reflect more. Play more is important. You could not understand the abstract value in Go if you don't have enough experience in playing Go. You need experience to understand this kind of stuff. But also, I would like you to reflect more. For example, I always do reflections on how I play. Did I play too aggressive in this game, or did I play too fast? That means I trying to surround too many territories, but leaving too many defense. Or on the other hand, did I play too slow in this game? I trying to play very solid at the corner, but I let my opponents to control the center. That I do not have good move to invade. I will reflect, and by reflecting, you will find a balance point of how to play. That's my experience. So, I have taught many stuff about the abstract problems. I would like to say, in my experience, I think people who focus to the abstract problems in Go, the problem is that. You should pay a lot of attention to the problems with objective answers too. I could quite confidently tell you that this is actually more important. To give you an example, there are many kids, six years old, seven years old, or eight years old, could get into fourth, five down, or six down, or even higher. To be honest, they are just children. They do not have good logical skills. And they do not have very good knowledge in the abstract knowledge about goal theory, but they could solve the the mega very fast. That means they could answer the problems with objective answers very accurately. That's why they are very strong. If the reality, if you could not kill a group, that could be killed. If you could not leave a group, that could be left. Then you could not win. And similarly, if you could not connect the Group that you could connect, cut the group that you could cut, or to play a larger yose in the end game. Then how could you win? Even though you master the abstract value, you know how to play beautifully in the opening or middle games. You surround a big moyo that was certainly more valuable than the opponent's territories, but your opponent trying to invade it and you could not kill it. Then you have nothing to say. So, you need to improve your knowledge about problems with objective answers. And here are my suggestions of how to improve this stuff. Firstly, the Encyclopedia of Life and Death and the Encyclopedia of Tetsuji is the good stuff. The encyclopedia actually did not cover all of the problems of life and death. Actually, only cover a. Very small amount of the life and death problems. There are hundred thousand life and death puzzles in the world, and I don't think anyone could solve all of them in their life. But the Encyclopedia of Life and Death collected the puzzles of the most important and common one in the real game. So it's very useful for you to learn the knowledge of life and death and technology. I would also suggest you to study professional games because professionals are strong, and as they are strong, they could answer the problems very beautifully. Or, on the other hand, they also created these problems in a very tricky way. You would learn how the professional players create puzzles and solving puzzles. This could help a lot. And lastly, of course, you should do more puzzles. But I put that at last because I understand that no one likes to do puzzles, and I could tell you that I seldom do puzzles for a very long time. I do puzzles daily in the past six months, but before that, I seldom do go puzzles. I could tell you that even if you do not do any go puzzles, it is possible for you to obtain that level or even. Fourth eight or nine dance, you could do that. But puzzles are very helpful. It's the truth. If you do not want to do puzzles, it's fine. But 
if you really want to improve, you should do puzzles. That's the suggestion. For many hobbyists, another problem is they spend too much time in Joseki and Fuseki study. Here, we need to first understand, is Joseki or Fuseki study talking about abstract problems or problems with objective answers? Here, I would say they cover both of them. For example, at this moment, is playing this better or playing this better? I think this kind of uh, abstract problem. And sometimes it will be more objective, but mostly it's very abstract. But when black play the this, if whites do not play this exchange, but play this directly, I would say this move is objectively won. The reason is that you're letting the black to connect. This means when black played this extension, you did not play the climb but play the connect, which is meaningless, useless, letting the black to block you. As a result, if black played the hane, this is objectively wrong. By arranging the sequence or comparing the results of the Joseki, we could figure out some bad moves objectively. But beyond that, there will be many studies talking about abstract goal understanding. I don't think it's very good to spend a lot of time into this stuff. I would suggest you to learn the basic Joseki, mainly under 10 moves, not to exist 15 moves. Learn the basic Joseki, don't only, don't learn the complicated one. Especially today, most of the old complicated Joseki are outdated. No one plays anymore. And actually, the openings and Fuseki studies in the 1980s are all outdated already too. So it's not very meaningful to spend a lot of time to study these stuff. I would suggest spending not more than 20% of time to study Joseki or Fuseki. Of course, this is my suggestion if you want to improve in goal. As goal is an interest, I always suggest you do what you like. If you really like Joseki and Fuseki study, it's very good, it's very fine, just do what you like. But if your aim is to improve, then my suggestion is not to spend too much time. I also highly recommend Smallbot. I have a reason to death too. Most Q players could not handle 9 handicap from a high down. Um, I know that there are many very well played Q players in Europe because the system in Europe is not the same with the Asian countries, but let's use the fourth Q level as a reference. A fourth Q level could not handle 9 handicap from 4-7 down or above. And I think that means you are not ready to handle too many problems in a large board, then why not? Start with the small board. Wait until you are prepared to solve many problems in a big board. You could play the small board in Gold Quest. I always suggest people to play the Gold Quest. The reason is it's very suitable for city life. You could play a 9x9 game in 5 minutes and you could play a 13x13 games in around 15 minutes. It's short. I also suggest Katago handicap games. I suggest you to try out 13 times 13 with 5 handicap and then 4 handicap. After you win this, you may try out 15 times 15 bot and try out 5 handicap and 4 handicap. Lastly, you may try out 17 times 17 bot with 5 handicap. If you could win this, you probably already have the ability and strength of a uh, run force 5 down. The reason is that Katako, that means AI, represents the best ghost technique we have nowadays. If you could handle Katako's attack or offense, then you could handle anyone offense. I think the best player in the world, that's AI, could show you the best way to play Go. Here I will tell you how to play with Katako. Um, you log into your OGS account and choose your computer. After that, you choose the AI player 
as Kadako Micro. And then you could set the bot size. You could change the value here to 13 times 13. And then you could change the handicap here. So that's all for my suggestions of how to improve. I hope this video could help. And here is a small advertisement. I have announced my Patreon for a while. And my Patreon members are very satisfied with their service. But it seems many viewers in this channel may not have confidence to my service and did not become my member yet. So here I would like to do some promotion. In this December, I will provide game review service for non-members. The charge will be 7 US dollars, I think around 5 pounds, for a 15 minute video reviews. It is actually very cheap. Because to prepare a 15 minute game reviews, I need to spend around 45 minutes. So I will only provide this service in December as a means of promotion. I hope more people could receive my game review service and would like to become my Patreon members. So that's all for this video. Thank you for watching and see you next time.